Florida State head coach Leonard Hamilton. Coach Ham, great to see you Hello. in person. I feel like we get to do interviews with you from afar sometimes. We get you singing gospel. We get different things. Um, I'm sure you're in a pretty good mood right now. We're, we're a month away from the season. What do we think about the team? I think we're undefeated. There you go. <laughs> Doesn't get much better than that, I, right? I like it. 11 years for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like this team. I think, I think well, as a coach, to have all five of your two-year veterans, your second-year <laughs> veterans return, people keep saying they have veterans, second-year players. <laughs> they, but they all have worked hard over the summer. They've improved. And so I'm, I'm pleased with that. And then the new players we have coming in, they're farther along than I expected. So it's a good it's a good feeling and a good combination uh, of, of fortunate things happen after going through what we did last year. Oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm pleased to say I'm happy right now. Yeah. <laughs> you got some veterans. Come on, Coach. All your six men of the year go off and be first round or lottery picks in the NBA draft. And you got Matthew Cleveland back. That's a guy that uh, give you a veteran presence out there. Well, what we like to do, we don't have a starting five. You know, we, we actually, in the last five years, I believe we've had nine different players lead our team in scoring. Which, which means that everybody's involved. My six, my six and seven man are my tenth and eleventh man, you know, in, in, right. in our system. Because we we don't we try not to emphasize who starts. It's the rotation of guys who can consistently play, with, with, with play with effort for long periods of time. Last year was a little different because instead of playing guys four and a half the five minutes, I'm playing them seven to eight minutes. Fatigue set in, and we try to do the same thing, but. With the injury we had, it's kind of kept us from doing it. So we're excited now. Well, Coach, I know you've been doing this a while, but I got to tell you, have you had anything happen to a team like last year where that depth just kind of withered away with injuries and, and just all kinds of things? Has that happened before? I've never heard of a team losing 53 games of injuries. No. That was, oh. uh, you know, that was, we, we were successful against Duke at home and four of the starters didn't even dress in the next time we played them. Wow. But that happens, and we try to utilize those moments is learning experience for our players. You know, two tests of a man's character is how you handle adversity. And you know, it's not easy to be happy when everything is going good. So we had a lot of adversity, and hopefully we'll be stronger as a result of what we went through last year. Talk about backcourt, because your defensive pressure starts in the backcourt. Yes. Obviously, you got Mills, you've got Cleveland. What do you see from your team defensively? Obviously, you're always going to extend the floor, press every single possession, deny every single pass. A year later, do the light bulbs go on for some of those guys to understand how to finish those possessions? Well, right now, I feel like I have a full complement of guys that are capable of doing what we like to do in our system. You know, Jaden Wally is really becoming a really, really good defender. Um, Darren Green, uh, from a transfer from Central Florida, surprising to me, he's a very, very good defender. And so we, we switch one through five, and so we're giving our guys an opportunity, you know, to go and and experience that early, and I think we're going to be pretty sound in it this year. Yeah, Coach, I mean, at this point right now, we're, we're a month away from starting the season. Where, where is your team right now? Who has stood out, and who do you expect on your team to really take that next step? I know Matthew Cleveland is a guy, especially when you think about what he's done last year on the, on the defensive end, but offensively, I still think he has the room to, to continue to improve, especially in his jump shot. But who do you see – as, as taking that next step, and what do you see your team as right now? Well, like I said earlier, from an offensive standpoint, we've had nine different guys lead our team in score in the last five years. So I think the full complement of our guys, we win, we really play, say that we win games by committee. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not overly concerned uh, about any one particular individual standing out offensively because we like everybody to be involved. We think it's more challenging to prepare for us when you don't know who you have to prepare for. Right. Uh, and defensively, you know, we try to recruit to the system that we want to utilize. I try to get long, athletic guys who finish. But Matthew made so many big plays in games that were critical that normally freshmen don't do. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about him, but I'm expecting him to do that. But we need everybody in the, at the same level focus mm -hmm. in, in, in order for us to be successful. Okay. Yes. You're bigger than basketball. Really? You're, you're a voice of, of our game. Yes. Uh, and I know you're very passionate about the well-being of our game and the people that play it. Yes. Where are we in terms of the state of basketball, in terms of helping grow young people and developing young people with everything that's gone on, with whether it's NIL, transfer portal, uh, 
student athlete welfare with all the different obstacles that are surrounding young people today? Well, I don't have, we don't have enough time for me to go in detail how I really feel about where we are, but I wish we could get all the parties together and let's talk about what's good for the young kids who are playing in our profession. What's good for not only what's going on now in basketball, but for our future. Right now we have so many competing parts, so many, uh, so much lack of information that our youngsters should have so they're able to make proper decisions. I mean, obviously the portal wasn't well thought out. When you have 450 college basketball players that, that put their name in the portal and don't have scholarships. In, in football, there's 4,000, so you got 43% of them. So you now you got almost 2,000 kids who have been forced to, who have been tantalized to make decisions that wasn't in their best interest. And I, wanna, I don't want to get into the other phases. I think we got to get together and talk about the pluses and minuses as opposed to having one group here making decisions, another group over here. At the rate we're going, we have some challenges that really need some discussion. Coach, that's big picture college basketball. I want to go big picture ACC with you as well because last year I feel like early on questions about how good the league, league was, how deep they would be, and obviously those were answered down the road. What do you foresee for, for the group that's coming back and how good the league is this year? That's one thing you have to know about the ACC. At the end of the year, we always stand in there giving a full account <laughs> of ourselves. Tell them. But because of TV, in the competitive nature, this conference better than his, this conference better than his. That's just, that's media talk. Mm -hmm. That's fan talk. That's competitive nature of program talking about that. I mean, North Carolina was a living example. They struggled a little bit, new coach, new system, adjusted, but they got hot right at the right time. I really believe they should give me part of the trophy, but they got fired up so much and, and jumped on us that we were, <laughs> and stole something. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> there you go. I, and, and so, I, I think we inspired them. I've never seen a team play as well. <laughs> <laughs> but my point is that even though they were a little inconsistent at times, they got it done early. I mean, late, late. And it made all the difference in the world. If you go back and look at the history of the NCAA tournament, the, the, the ACC has always given a full count of themselves, regardless of all the, that, that talk that yeah. goes on during the course of the year. This conference number one, this conference number one, at the end of the day, we always gonna be standing there giving a full count of ourselves. Early you talked about some of the inconsistencies with some of the rules and, and just the environment, the ever-changing environment of college basketball. How do you feel like the transfer portal has really benefited your program though? Because I look at guys, Cameron Fletcher, Caleb Mills, and, and then both of those guys told me about Mr. Green that's come in. Darren Green can yeah, shoot. can really, really play. Well, for me personally in Florida State, we have not been negatively affected by the portal, but I'm talking about what's good for the basketball. I'm good, it's good for the youngsters that are trying to go to school and need to get their education so they can have a better way of life. I'm looking at the big picture. It, it doesn't affect us negatively as much as it does other people, but I'm not worrying about the individual schools. I'm worrying about what's good for the mindset of the youngsters who are coming in here, creating this atmosphere that you want to watch them on TV, you want to you go out and play with them, what's best for them and, and, and 450 kids not having scholarship to me because of the portal is not good. I can be selfish and say, doesn't hurt us. You know, we get kids who want to transfer in. But what's good for the game and the kids who participate? We ever get ahead of college basketball? I'm just telling you now, you'll be my nomination. I hope they put you right at the top and you make all the decisions for everybody. Because that's, Bizarre, that's I like a selfless it. man right now. Yeah. Wow. Bizarre. Yeah. But listen. when you think about it, Coach, y'all, it, it, it's about the, I feel like it's about teaching the kids about the culture of the programs. I think that a lot of kids come into programs and they think that they're bigger than the program. You all, y'all have built a, a good culture, in particular you. So it, I feel like it's about teaching them about who were the guys before them and, and that established that, that have paved the road. And I don't know how you think about that, but that's what I feel like is about teaching these kids about the culture. Well, there's no question about that. We use that. I mean, we, we stand on some big shoulders. That when Florida State, on our way back, you know, those guys made tremendous sacrifices, some very good players uh, to get us where we are. But I'm just more concerned about giving these kids information. When, 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 I mean, and I don't want to get into that technically, but there's a lot of information 
lacking of a lot of information, they're allowing kids to make poor decisions about when they should put the name in the draft. We need to have a, a whole 10, 12 year track record of what actually happens to a lot of those guys who, are, who make those decisions. Yeah, to give true. them the information. And whatever decisions that they make, we, can, we live with it. But right now, I think we're, making, we, we're getting false information where sometimes people that this, we as a collective body of basketball people are not providing our youth with the information that it takes to make good sound decisions and judgments. Coach, your 21st season this year with Florida State, I know you've had a lot of good experiences, a lot of great moments. Winning always feels good, but is there one thing that still, like, you just wake up and you're like, wow, I'm so excited for this, or that I get to do that, or to see this player? Is there anything that stands Not out? Not media day. <laughs> Besides sitting by <laughs> Seth Greenberg and the rest of us right now. Well, I know you've had this one circled on the calendar. We've been, we've been here going on 21 years. We've only had two kids not graduate. I got to get those other two. You know what I mean? That would make me very, very happy. Um, I, I think the most important thing for us as coaches, not lose perspective on what we really are doing. We recognize by how many games we win, how many tournaments, how many NCAA tournaments we make, you know, how many awards we get. But, but the most important thing we do, we're taking teenagers and urging them into young adulthood, mm -hmm. where they're going to be good neighbors, fathers, citizens. And, and, and guys who are productive in their lives with their families. That's the most important thing we do. That's what 98% of all the players that we coach are going to be doing. And we need to also try to enhance those elite players that have opportunity to go in and enjoy continuing playing basketball. That's two different things. But sometimes the elite players get all the attention, but, but it's the really overall success of your program what you're doing. If I only have trophies and awards and look I can got to look back at and be proud of and then the youngsters that help you get to those things are not having success in life, then that's a problem. And we try to place as much emphasis in those areas as we do on the winning side. You've created great such stuff. a great culture there, affected so many young men's lives, Coach, and I know that's why people want to come play for you outside of just all the winning that you guys do. We appreciate the time. We'll let Coach Hubert Davis know when he comes by a little later that he owes you a thank you for sparking all of that as well. <laughs> so thanks so much, Coach. Yeah, yeah. When and, we... and he can give you part of that race, too. Part of the race. Perfect. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll, we'll put the request in for you.